Welcome back, you guys, to the Booty Bands More Than Fitness podcast. I'm your host, Danita, and today we're going to be interviewing Adora. Adora is an author. She's also a chief of staff. She has a double master's, you guys. She's also a certified chair yoga instructor and certified in a diversity, equity, inclusion. So welcome, Adora, to the podcast. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me, Danita. I'm so happy to be here. Booty Bands and Barbells helps busy women sculpt and tone their bodies in just 15 minutes a day through our physical products and our one-on-one coaching. I've been speaking a lot with women and a lot about loving the skin that they're in has been a topic that's been coming up recently. And the first person that I could think of is you. Thank you. When I think of loving the skin that you're in, it, it reminds me back to a time that you and I were having a conversation in my kitchen and you had told me about a very beautiful and also vulnerable experience of when you were raised as a little girl and how you were learning about what that confidence and loving the skin that you're in type of experience. So can you, do you mind sharing us what that story is? I don't mind. My dad is military. Once you're in the military, you're always in the military, (laughs) but I grew up in Germany. So back and forth from Germany, the United States, Germany. Then for a while it was Mannheim, Hanau, Bakorsnak, Garmisch, back to back. I remember when my dad was stationed in Bakorsnak, I think that was the first time. I remember the moment we were on base. I was with my mother and on base, they still have like PXs on like military bases where you can go shopping or you can go eat. And I was just sitting down eating and girls came up to me and they literally were throwing rocks at me. They were throwing rocks at me. They were throwing paper towels at me. And then when they were through the paper towels at me, they told me to like wipe the darkness off my skin or that I looked like a coal miner's daughter just from how dark I am was really, really hurtful and hurtful to the point that I also just like didn't like didn't understand like this was the skin that I was born with. Like this is this is who I am. This is all I've ever known. And these girls are don't like me and calling me ugly and making these really mean comments just because of the way I was born, the wow. way I was brought into this world. And I was just in tears. Like I remember it to this day. When I was talking about the memories, I remember that day. And tears just were thrown down my face. My mom took like we went home and she sat me down and She told my dad and my dad came and they sat me in front of a mirror and they literally had me repeat to myself that I am beautiful. I am worthy, smart. I'm every, everything. And at first I was like, tear. I was like, no, this is no, no, I'm not. They do these mean things to me and I'm tearing. And of course I, you know, I don't want to say it. I'm a little girl just hear those horrible things. And I'm sitting there and it's hard. It's hard to have to say that even to yourself and even admit it to yourself. And especially at that age where, and I say at that age, like I was in, I was in elementary school. So they made, they did not let me get up until I said it until I believed it. I was there for hours, hours. And at first it felt like punishment and it took me a long time to realize that it wasn't. And my parents even like, you could tell that it was just hurting their heart and they weren't going to leave. They stayed right by my side next to me every step of the way for the I'm beautiful. I'm worth it in actually until I believed and it was true. My dad has like the same skin tone as myself and my mom has a lighter skin tone, but they sat next to me, like one on each side to make sure like we are all beautiful. And it was a really impactful experience. And it's something that I had to continue doing throughout my life. That one time helped me do it again and again and again to the point that I don't have to do it anymore because I know it and I believe it. That's something that has stuck with me. And I still do it. And now I look in the mirror. I'm like, oh, hey, that's me. <laughs> oh, I hope you guys felt that as much as I do. It always tears me up as um, a lot of us can relate in our own ways. 
and got a conversation with a girl that hers was about her big breasts, that she was named Jugs from as young as she can remember um, being in grade school and just always teased about her body. And she same similar experience, like this is what I was born with. And you're making fun of me. And and it was so rude to the point that she just suppressed and suppressed and suppressed those emotions. And I'm not sure I had, she didn't have the parents to be able to kind of walk her through that. But the reality, when you were telling me that story, Adora, what I heard was the parents that are now listening, that maybe they didn't have those parents to help them, but they can be the parents now to their children that are going to be possibly experiencing something similar and be able to walk them through like how your parents did for you. Absolutely. And I mean, I'm just shout out to the big old titties over here because I got those two <laughs> all, all the way. Really important. And something that my parents did that I enjoyed was the affirmations. And they still give me affirmations to this day because you're going to continue to get negative comments. It's how you build yourself and how people that you keep around you more than likely give you also like those positive affirmations. I remember San Diego, my parents, my parents aren't around anymore. You know, I was out living in San Diego, I was grown, living my life, full job. And somebody came up to me while I was going into a li- the library and said, I'm sorry, I have to stop you, but you can't be all black because your nose is just too perfectly straight. I'm sorry, it's up to a random stranger and says that I am 100% African American, black, and beautiful, feel it all in my skin and in my being and who I am. I was like, my nose has absolutely nothing to do with it. But you take that and you think, I know who I am. My parents instilled me who I am. They gave me the affirmations. They told me I was beautiful. They spoke to me in a way that. I felt strongly about myself every single step. And I think that is something that is key. And you mentioned before how they spoke to me. I am very tall, about 6'1". And I was called the Jolly Green Giant. I was called the Jolly Black Giant. I was called absolutely everything. And it made me think, well, is something wrong with me being tall? Everyone says I'm this huge big tall person and you are six one you are you are statuesque have all of these like they started saying things and providing positive synonyms for other words without regarding my height hmm. and I think that is something that is also so important because words have meaning to the person receiving the words hmm. I can say to you Danita I think your hair looks absolutely just beautiful today but I don't know, maybe you've had a bad hair day and you think you don't know it. And so for you, that could be, wow, did she notice something was wrong with my hair and she's making me think that it was beautiful? Like there's so many things that could be said to the person. So you need to be as positive as possible, but understand you have to know what's going on intrinsically inside you because how you receive that information is the most important and what you do with it, it is the most important. Hmm. So I've had to learn that along the way. Hmm. Thank you for sharing that. And I see you. And even though as you stand six, one tall, you still wear <laughs> high heels. I do. Own it. <laughs> I absolutely love, love my high heels. I love my high heels. I love my long legs. I mean, they, my height helped me get a full ride for volleyball in college. So there are a lot of things that are positive with my height that I love. And my dad's six, four. So of course I was going to be tall somewhere. <laughs> yeah. I remember, and thank you for sharing this. It's actually, it makes me feel like I can really on, um, I remember I was so tall that I was so uncomfortable because I was taller than all the guys that I liked in like fourth grade. Right. Uh, I remember shrinking myself. I remember physically like rounding my back and hunching over so that I could try to like fit into everybody else. And it wasn't apparent to me until I actually got my fourth grade pictures back. And it was very apparent of that. I was like really (laughs) rounding myself and I looked like hunchback at Notre Dame, my photo. And I was like, oh my gosh, wow, this is, this is what I'm doing. And so physically shrinking ourselves, what does that mean? Do you done that in your life where you were trying to shrink yourself and you were like, here I am world 
here I am, all parts of me. And it's just so beautiful and so apparent. A lot of times that not shrinking myself, but also not understanding. And I feel like that not understanding was a sh- was definitely a growing moment. That yes, I would be quiet because I felt like I didn't fit in, whether it was my height or because of like the color of my skin. And it's really interesting because growing up in Germany, I came to the US and I thought, oh, it's just going to be just so different. No, it was probably heightened here. We're in high school. It was so interesting. I was the only Black girl on a volleyball team full of all white females. And as a Black female, I did think maybe the sport isn't for me. Oh. I'm supposed to be here. And I started late. A lot of people start younger. I started in the ninth grade. I thought, is this something that I should be doing? Interesting. That was a that was definitely a shaking point for me. I was I was great. And you know what? They wanted me because I was tall. They were like, you can't teach height. <laughs> you can't teach height. You can't teach height and you can't have the skin that you're born with. And so I was like, is this my sport? Mm-hmm. And then I got, I was a freshman. I was on the freshman team. I got moved up to the, vars- to the varsity team. I'm at the end. And I remember this girl came to me. She was on the varsity. I had taken her spot in the championship and she came to me and she was like, you are a ugly black bitch with attitude. And I was like, hmm. I have done nothing to her. I don't know what I've been doing. All I'm doing is winning. Winning. I like, we're just helping the team win. And that was a moment I was like, again, am I not supposed to be here? I went to the coach. I told the coach and she was like, that's unacceptable. She's out of here. You're meant to be here. But it was something that I had to still think about. Like, is this supposed to be my sport? Like my sport? Yes, I ended up getting a full ride to go to college and play. But it took my, it took me time to understand that there's definitely going to be hate in people's heart just because of the way that I am or the way that I look. The way that I take that internally doesn't have to be negative. I can't help the way that person sees me, but I can help how I see myself. I am a great, beautiful volleyball player. I love it. I'm so grateful for that. I'm so grateful because those that are listening need to hear. So I appreciate you showing up. So I have a a last question for you is if somebody's listening right now, And they have just spent years and years and years of that hating the skin that they're in, whether it's their height or it's their boobs or it's their skin color, whatever it is. What is something that you would maybe almost tell like your old self, right? That younger you that might be them right now. What is something that could be words that would help them maybe see something a little different, which I'm sure you've already said, but any recap? Look in the mirror. You look in the mirror every single day and say that you are the most beautiful you. You are the most beautiful you. No one is going to hype you up more than you. You deserve to be hyped up by you. You deserve to call yourself beautiful. You deserve to love the skin that you're in. You deserve to be tall, short, curvy, whatever it is. You deserve it because you're absolutely beautiful. Everything about you. And keep telling yourself that. Keep telling yourself that until you believe it because it is absolutely true in, in every single way. And even t- in, to now and to the person today, tell yourself that today. Every single time, get naked, walk in front of the mirror and be like, yes, that's my booty. (laughs) Yes, that is me. It was like, do you see the curve of this boob? Do you see the shine in my shoulder? 
Because if you notice all the beautiful things, that's really all that matters. That is what I would say. Thank you for sharing that. That was really, really amazing. I'm going to turn around and grab this book on my shelf right now. And I want you to go ahead and tell me a little bit about what this means. And just wanted to give a little shout out to this awesome whiskey chocolate by Yay! Adora. Tell a little bit about this book. Um, so there is whiskey chocolate. There is whiskey chocolate too that is also out. They're poetry books, and it is love, sex, and romance in the description of whiskey and chocolate. I absolutely love it. It's my heart and soul. I'm I'm working on a book three, which is very very exciting. And so I know with some new and exciting things coming out, but it is. Also, really about the skin that you're in, but loving the sexuality of it, and there's all different shades of chocolate. You have white chocolate, you have milk chocolate. There's peanut butter chocolate. There's like white chocolate, macadamia nut chocolate. There's like absolutely everything, and there's also all different tastes of whiskeys. And there's going to be ups and downs and sad moments. You might take that shot and it might burn. You might take that shot of whiskey and it might feel real smooth. And so it's understanding about kind of like the luscious sensuality of different chocolates and different whiskeys and how they can be described in love, in sex, and having head, whatever you would like. There's everything in there. Mm. Love it. You guys know my connection with Adora of just being one of my absolute best friends and one of my bridesmaids to my wedding and just someone I, I keep in contact all the time. And one of my most really memorable moments hanging out with Adora is that learning to love yourself because you see her and the love that she has for herself is so inspiring that it becomes addicting. And just being around her energy about how she does love herself and how she writes and expresses all of that. It's allowed me to even be okay with my sexuality, where I've also shied and tried to, you know, hide away from. But allowing that different perspective and that love for it is so needed. And I just wanted to express thank you so much for all of those long conversations or that education or just those Moments of just learning to just love ourselves, that confidence you exude is very needed. So thank you for your time today and expressing just your confident self and how you did it and your road to it. Oh, thank you, Danita. And thank you for like the safe space that you provide everyone. And especially me, because this is a safe space that you created that other people aren't doing. Mm. So, thank you. I've received that. You're welcome. For those, if you're interested, there is somewhere where they could reach out to Adora and actually get your book and learn more about you and maybe follow you. My book is on Amazon. You can get both of them there. Awesome. So search Whiskey Chocolate Adora Luster, L-U-S-T-E-R, and Adora Like Adorable, right? Yes. Isn't she the most adorable? <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks again, Adora, for your time for that love that you exude, for that presence you put on this earth and for us women to just look and see that example. So I appreciate it so much and have a beautiful rest of your day. You too. Bye. Bye. So I have really never stuck with anything for more than six months until I found Booty Bands Barbells. It's life-changing. The progress over perfection mindset has been so life-changing. Have self-love and to have self-worth. I just do the 10 minutes and I'm already reaping the benefits. The workouts are fun and that they're effective. I have seen great results that I never thought I'd ever see. I love it because I'm keeping the weight off. We help hold each other accountable and stay committed to our goals. Booty Bands and Barbells has really changed my life for the better. I have to be real with you. The past six months really took a toll on me and my body. I felt incredibly stressed, isolated. After being a good 12 to 13 pounds heavier, I said that's it, I'm gonna make healthy choices. And I'm happy to tell you today that I am actually down 15 pounds. I feel amazing. I feel like I lost fat and put on muscle. I have a lot more energy. So it's never too late to start you can take control again thanks booty band nation positive that you will get more sculpted more toned and you're going to love those new healthy changes and our community and our coaches from where you're at no matter where you are or how long you've been in the position so just click the button below to book the call with our team